So you finished your first draft and you're super duper excited, but what do you do now? How do you dive back in with the mindset of polishing all this jumbled mess of words that you've just written? So first off, I think it's important to understand the difference between editing and writing. Have you ever heard of the quote, you should write first for yourself and then for others? In a nutshell, that basically means that you should write the story that you want to read. And if you're a fan of this particular line of thought, then this next quote should put it into perspective for you. You should edit first for your reader, and then for your reader. Now that you've written a story that you would enjoy, now it's time to make sure that the reader would enjoy it too. This entire world and all of its characters are already in your head. Now it's your job to make sure you don't lose anything important when you're translating that onto paper. In the editing phase, you should make sure that your story makes sense to fresh eyes, that your characters have as much depth on paper as they do in your head, and this part is very important, so listen up, that your reader keeps reading. As you go through your editing, make sure that interesting stuff is actually happening. While you may like these exotic flowers that grow in your world, make sure that it doesn't bore your reader. Right, Kira? Kira and Rocky have something to tell me. Uh-huh. Okay, they said if the readers made it this far, then it's your job to keep them there. So in this video, I'm going to be going over two stages of the editing process. And the first one is the first big edit. I'm sorry, I don't have a fancy word for it. My tip for this stage is to make a list. To make your story better, first you need to know what's wrong with it. And how do you go about doing that? You should quickly, but make sure you take as much time as you need, skim through what you've written or take a look at your outline. Now make a big list of the things that you need to edit or add in a Word document or even in a notebook. Since I'm type A in the strangest ways, I like to color code this step to distinguish between the rewrite scenes and the add scenes. Now this list is something that I actually start during my writing process, but it can always be started after. So if you're still writing, if you just finish a scene and you wanna add some foreshadowing to it earlier on in the novel, just pencil that baby in on your list. For me, it would look something like add foreshadowing for blank before scene blank. And then I would put it in the appropriate color because I'm weird like that. Hey, we're not the only ones with Christmas stuff still up. Speaking of colors, I also color coordinate the scenes in Scrivener. Look at this handy dandy picture. So if you right click on your scene in your binder and hover over the change icon button, you can select whatever you want to differentiate these scenes from the other ones. For me, blue flags are rewrites and red ones are the new or add scenes. If you've finished writing completely, then looking at your outline could point out some similar changes that you might need to make. Remember, for your first big edit, you're not really concerned with the flow of how things go, but more about the structural elements of your novel. And of course, making sure that they all make sense. So after reviewing your outline, you may notice that one scene might go better in front of another scene. Sounds easy enough, right? Not if there's suddenly a new character that's popping up because they haven't been introduced yet. Now that you've moved that scene ahead of some others, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Then add that sucker to your rewrite list. For my own list, I actually look at both my outline and my novel. Most of us don't stick completely to our outline and some plot points may come up along the way that you hadn't originally planned for. So to get a really detailed list, make sure to take a look at both. So once you have your list all ready to go, it's time to let the editing begin. I like to sort my list starting with the larger items and working my way down to the smaller items. Let me give you a really scientific reason for that. Just kidding, I don't have any fancy studies to back that one up. But I can say that it just makes sense to start with the larger items that could have a ripple effect in some scenes later on. If suddenly you decide to kill off a character in the middle of your novel that wasn't previously killed off, you're gonna be editing more than just that one scene. This is a pretty big item on your list, so you're gonna be editing every scene that follows that ever mentions that character. So if they have a major scene at the end of your novel, you're gonna have to make sure that you take that out, but do it after you've actually edited in their death. This way, if you need to, you can still incorporate some of the details of their death without having to go back and forth between the two. So in the end, you're not messing up a bed that you just made, only to make it again. Now's the time to get on your swimsuit, preferably one that won't fall off, and dive right in. I love lists for one reason alone. I get so much satisfaction from crossing that stuff off. I have a visual of the progress that I'm making and it propels me forward. This stage of your writing could last a week or it could last three months. But for a lot of us, we could start to feel a little overwhelmed. Are you shocked at how many items are on your list? Don't focus on that at all. Just totally forget that I just asked that question. Don't even think about it. I literally have to sit here sometimes and tell myself to focus. Sometimes I'll get sidetracked by reading my entire novel or by trying to find the perfect song to fit this scene and you just have to focus. You have a to-do list to keep you on track. Start at the top of that list and gradually work your way down. Once you start making progress, you're gonna feel more and more excited about releasing your book baby into the world. So when your list is down to the really teeny tiny items that won't wipe their muddy paws all over your other scenes, then it's time to move on. Now you're gonna be 
the editing from start to finish. Since you've jumped around a little bit, your manuscript might be a hot mess. Now it's time to edit your manuscript as you read it. You can do this step either on your computer or you can print it all out and write it all down on paper, but that might get messy. You wanna to try to read it as if you're the buyer, so don't jump from chapter 24 to chapter five to chapter 16. Go in order. This phase is more about the flow of your story and that making sure all the structural edits you just make now sound really eloquent and blended into all of your other writing. So a couple things that you can do during this phase, delete some scenes. Sometimes, especially if we go back and we add some things, we can end up writing something down in more than one place. It doesn't have to be the same sentence or even the same words, but sometimes the general idea will get out there more times than we really need. For example, maybe you mentioned how lonely your character was in chapter one, and then you realize that you said it again in chapter two. Just make sure you take it out because I'm pretty sure we got it the first time. And no one likes repetitive writing. If you tend to overwrite, then try to find places to cut things out. If a scene doesn't really do much for the story, then suck it up and just cut it out. But what if it's really, really eloquent? It just doesn't really do much for the story. This is what people like to call your darlings and you need to cut them out. I'm sorry. Rest in peace, darlings. Do you find that you wrote down a thousand words about your character making coffee in the morning? Cut them out, we don't need it. Just say she made coffee. During this phase, you can also add scenes. Wait, what? You just told me to delete scenes. Why are you telling me to add scenes? No, this doesn't make any sense. This part is more for underwriters, but every writer tends to do it at one point or another. So during your read through, you might find that your scene is a little too fast paced or that you've accidentally placed more focus on something other than the plot point. Sometimes this requires editing, but a lot of times you can kind of finagle things and add some words in to make things a little more smooth. This way you can expand upon what the reader is actually supposed to be focused on. Remember though, you only ever add scenes if they're relevant. Don't waste the words to write them if they're not going to move the reader in any way. So those are the two big phases for self-editing. And once you're done with these two, then you can actually find your beta readers. And after those edits, then you're going to send your manuscript off to a professional editor. Beta readers and professional editors are actually two topics I'm going to go over at a later date. But if you have any particular questions about them that you want me to answer, make sure to tweet me at Vivian Reed or just drop a comment down below. Altogether, that's four major edits that your novel is going to see. Now, that might sound like a lot, but again, your reader experience is number one priority for your editing. So don't skimp on editing ever. All right, so I'm going to close this with a couple more tips for you guys. While most of what I just talked about can be applied more towards editing after you finish writing your first manuscript, you might could try actually editing while you're still in the writing phase. Now, when I first started writing, I could not do this at all because I would literally get stuck on like chapter six and I would not never be able to move forward because I'm trying to make it perfect. But remember, if you ever find that happening to yourself or if you get stuck in editing mode and not writing mode, you should stick to editing after you finish your first draft. Don't even look at what you've written if that happens to you. But if you're able to edit a little bit while you're writing, then it makes your flow kind of sound a little better and it makes your draft a lot cleaner by the time you get to your big edits. The last big thing I wanna point out to you guys, nothing is too big that it can't be fixed. If you're freaked out by the size of your to-do list or you don't think that your writing's any good or your editing is taking longer than expected, just remember that it can always be fixed. If you don't think that your novel is any good, then figure out why. Is it your verbiage? Then change it. Is your writing just not not really engaging, then make sure there's tension in your scenes and that you're always writing using your five senses to make your writing seem real. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new writing videos every Wednesday. And if you ever have any writing questions or suggestions for my new videos, you can always tweet me at Vivian Reese. Real note, if you ever wanna ask me a question but you're too afraid to really put your name out there, you can always ask on Tumblr and just use the ask anonymously option. All my links for social media are down below. Bye guys. Okay, and in a nutshell, Kira, can you get your butt off camera, please? Inappropriate. She's shedding. Oof. That's just a little pinch right there. It's like a little Kira snowball. Let's get another one. Oof. What about that? And remember, all of my links for my social media are down below. Oh my gosh. That is Kira dog hair. Husky problems.